When a surprise win makes you richer than your wildest dreams. Hi, I'm Bunky Bartlett, and I won $84 million in the Maryland Lottery. What happens next? I'm interested in money, especially my own money. Do you indulge your own personal passions? This is my fun machine. Or spread your wealth around. Bunky did help me purchase the crab house. It should be the win of a lifetime, but for some, it becomes a nightmare. I was just like, oh, what am I going to do with a house in Maryland? I'm Louis J., and I won a million dollars in a lottery. We got all set for this weekend. When college student Louis J. followed the family tradition of Boy Scouts, he had no idea the finance training would come in so handy. In the Boy Scouts, you have to get like personal accounting merit badge, personal management merit badge, where they teach you how to manage money. But even the Scouts couldn't prepare Louis for becoming an overnight millionaire. This is the story everybody wants to hear. So it was my birthday. I went to a donut shop, got this large frozen drink, and it just slipped out of my hand. <laughs> my mother had a saying from the old country that if something sweet fell on you on a special day, was a very good omen. My grandmother said, oh, well, if you spill something sweet on your birthday, you should go buy a lottery ticket. Lewis bought a $20 mega buck scratch off. I matched six from my numbers into the winning numbers. And I remember when I scratched it and the price said a million dollars. The 19-year-old Boy Scout had just collected a cool million, taking home 650000 after taxes. And then I literally just was in shock for at least two days after. I didn't want to have that. I told you so in my voice, but I was very happy for him. He took it in, in stride and realized it is very, very nice but he's still gonna have to work. He used to write on the computer, if I ever won the money, I would give to this, to that, to charity. So when he did win the money, he just printed it out. In true Boy Scout spirit, the computer science student gave 10% of his winnings to charity and money to his family. The maximum allowed you can give as a gift is $12,000. So I give that to each of my parents, my aunt and uncle, and my grandmother to help pay off some bills. <laughs> But with his good deeds done, this Boy Scout has allowed himself a few extravagances. Right now, uh, we're in New York, um, in Manhattan specifically, at World. I guess my main uh, one splurge <laughs> with my money has been buying uh, nice shoes and t-shirts. Uh, so I buy like three pairs of shoes um, or like four or five t-shirts at a time. He likes to shop in New York and Miami, spending up to a thousand bucks in one go. Yeah, this one's cool. Because it has the oh, add there. This perfect. one's nice, isn't it? Definitely, I'll take this it. This one's going to be 486.31. Apart from buying you a new image, having a million bucks as a student can bring a lot of perks. This building right here in Newell Hall uh, is where I lived my freshman year and my sophomore year. Like moving off campus and buying some new wheels. But Lewis passed on the Porsche. So I ended up buying a 2008 Chevy Malibu LTZ, uh, fully loaded, and I know it sounds ooh, fully loaded, but really fully loaded includes a sunroof and a three-prong outlet in the back seat. Um, I found a friend of mine from high school, and I moved here to this townhouse. I love living off campus. It's so much more free. Hey! The most ridiculous thing I have besides my car, which isn't too ridiculous, is the big TV I have at my place. He hasn't gone crazy because this teen millionaire wants to grow his money for his future. All my money is invested in about 80% stocks and 20% bonds. He's gambled his remaining 550000 on the volatile stock market. But is his luck about to run out? This is crazy. They're all just trying not to lose money. Karen McHale, and I want a $1.2 million house for 50 bucks! When Karen McHale bought a charity raffle ticket, she had no idea what she was getting herself into. I saw on TV this couple in Maryland had decided to raffle their house, and they had partnered with a charity, so I decided to buy two of the raffle tickets for the house. For this Colorado resident, the tickets were nothing more than a donation. And I don't win anything. I wasn't going to win. In fact, Karen forgot all about it until... I answered the phone, and uh, Tom said, you know, this is Tom, and 
and with the $50 house. And so I'm thinking, well, why are you calling me? Karen bought a couple tickets one day, and she forgot that she had purchased them. He said, well, we just did the drawing, and, you know, you're the grand prize winner, and you won the house. Karen had won this $1.2 million luxury home in upscale Annapolis. I was just like, oh, what am I going to do with a house in Maryland? I live in Colorado. I mean, I, I don't even know anybody in Maryland. <laughs> The win was as big a shock to her husband, Ryan, as it was to her. I said, but we won the house. And and the first thing I said was, <laughs> it's got to be a scam. <laughs> but it wasn't. The raffle was a clever sales idea by owners Tom and Diane Walters. We thought this is a way that not only can we sell our house for full price, uh, save the commissions and the closing costs, we can help out a very worthy cause in the process. The house is an impressive residence set on two acres near the Chesapeake Bay. But it didn't start out that way. We thought we would buy basically the smallest house in the neighborhood and make it our own and add on to it and, you know, kind of customize it for ourselves. This is the original portion here, uh, and this is what we fell in love with. Uh, in between the two chimneys uh, is the original log cabin. Shortly after they closed in 2004, Tom's real estate business boomed, and so did construction on the log cabin. We could just do just about whatever we wanted. We had this big, empty canvas. The renovations cost over 650000 18 rooms, six bedrooms, four and a half baths, two kitchens, uh, and an unfinished basement. Valued at almost $1.5 million at its peak, the Walters finally had their dream home. But it cost a fortune to run. Then the housing bubble burst, and Tom's real estate business slowed. The combination of a, a larger job than we had uh, initially intended, uh, coupled with you know, additional monies that we put into it, uh, along with my income dropping a little bit, made it necessary for us to downgrade. Rather than taking a loss in a falling market, Tom came up with a brilliant idea to raffle the house at $50 a ticket. Sounds very easy to, to just raffle off your house. It's not it's difficult, but, you know, we had to have a charity involved. That charity was a local group called We Care and Friends. We Care and Friends is a program that worked with people that fell through the cracks of life. Uh, folks as homeless, folks that's on substance abuse. Last year, we found out that we might not be getting any money, uh, that we might be shutting down, and we needed help. Tom called me, you know, we started the raffle. Now Tom had to get the word out about the $50 house. He created a do-it-yourself media blitz. Radio, TV, print, Facebook, roadside <laughs> signs. Within days, the media latched on to the story. The raffle sold a massive 24,000 tickets over five months, raising 1.2 million bucks. But for winner Karen McHale, the house is a blessing and a curse because she forgot to read the fine print. So I actually have to pay like 40% in taxes on that $1.2 million to keep the house. Coming up, find out why this lottery winner refuses to quit his day job. That's the hustle and the bustle of the day. Absolutely love it. And later, meet America's Wiccan millionaire. I'm Wiccan, I'm a witch. What percentage of people think they've won more playing the lottery than they've spent on lottery tickets? We'll tell you later. Step right up. Welcome to the Hanson and Son. And Famous Footwear is the place for great savings. And now for a limited time, save up to an additional $30 on already great. Seven professional monitors. To the hair I was meant. You just pick a. What percentage of people think they've won more playing the lottery than they've spent on lottery tickets? Only 8%. I'm Bunky Bartlett, and I won $84 million in the Maryland lottery. One day, Bunky Bartlett, a bookkeeper, was having his tarot cards read at a New Age shop near Baltimore when he received a message that he couldn't ignore. Two months before I won the lottery, I would started getting readings from some of the local tarot card readings here in the shop. And everything that I was getting was telling me I needed to teach more. And that would mean not 
making any money. My family would be on the street. So one day I'm sitting in the coffee shop after having a reading and I just kind of like yelled at the universe and said, fine, if this is what you want me to do, let me win the lottery and I'll do it. Bunky bought a lottery ticket, and with it, a new future as a teacher of the Wiccan religion, among other things. We just do the quick pick and just let the machine pick the numbers. So that's what we did. Went home, went to bed, and the next morning we woke up multimillionaires. Bunky and his family won a massive $84 million. He took the payout, landing $33 million after taxes. Before I won the lottery, I was a bookkeeper, and I was working somewhere between 60 to 70 hours a week. It actually hit me that with the amount of money that we won, that basically we would never have to work again for the rest of our life. Then Bunky came out of the broom closet and caused a media storm as America's first openly Wiccan lottery winner. I'm Wiccan. I'm a witch. Wicca is not um, Satanism. In fact, it's a modern-day take on an old pagan religion made popular in 1950s Britain. Wicca is a nature-based religion. The understanding of nature and our place in it. The day after he won, Bunky walked into his favorite car dealership with nothing but his ticket in hand. The cash hadn't even hit his account yet. Hey, Jesse. Hey. How's it going? Welcome back. The day that we won the lottery, I called Apple Ford because I wanted to make sure that they would, you know, actually give me a car on just a ticket. And the manager said, sure, come on in, we'll talk. And then he just let me walk off with the car. I actually walked away off the showroom floor with a fully loaded Ford Expedition. Bunky came in one night, him and his wife, and bought the whole showroom. I bought a car like this. I bought the sister car to this one. I bought this one for my son. He spent over a million bucks on cars, but the cars were just the tip of the iceberg. To celebrate his win, Bunky threw himself a lavish party. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to do a rock concert in our backyard. Guess who's going to be the artist? Delana. She's an awesome talent. Yep, that's the same Delana who shot to fame when she was runner-up on a hit reality series. But when the celebrations were over, Bunky got right back to business. When I won that kind of money, the first thing that crossed my mind was, I'm now a corporation. I put some of it into investments, I took some of it into real estate, and I just diversified everything to make sure that, you know, I would still have my money, you know, three, four, five, 20 years from now. Bunky established Pangaea Investments, a company that would oversee all of his ventures. This is my office. This is where everything happens. This is where I yell at people. This is where I praise people. My father, his business ideas move about 50 million miles a minute. Um, it's very, very hard to keep up with him. Um, I feel bad for his personal assistant. Then he started building his dream team. Key players are his personal assistant, Christina, vice president of Pangaea Vera. Daughter Ashley looks after the finances. A lot of the people that work for me are either my friends or are acquaintances that I have met. I separate business from personal, and I'm very good at doing that. With his dream team in place, this Wiccan millionaire is launching his first big venture. Kabunk Records is the label that my wife and I started. And for his first artist, he's going big. We are working on signing Delana. My name is Tanya Skipper, and I won $4 million in the New Zealand lottery. That's $2.5 million American dollars. Auckland, New Zealand, a seaside city on the Pacific Ocean with its very own lotto-winning soccer mom. Go. I play the New Zealand lottery every week, and I had no expectations about winning. But on the night before her 40th birthday, Tanya bet two bucks on a lotto ticket. The next morning, she checked her numbers. I said to John, oh, I've got six numbers. What does that give us? And he, we looked it up, and it said 300,000. And um, that was great. That's 190,000 American dollars. One heck of a birthday present. But Tanya's husband, John, reminded her to check one more number. I just happened to say to Tanya, well, pity you didn't powerball that. And um, she said, well, I did. I actually looked down and I had that lucky number eight. 
and that changed the whole situation. Tanya's winning jackpot climbed from 190 grand to a whopping two and a half million. And in New Zealand, the money's totally tax-free. You don't realize how it changes your life just in an instant. But becoming an overnight millionaire can be difficult at first. The skippers were uncomfortable telling family and friends about their good fortune. How do you go about telling them that you want a large sum of money? You're not quite sure what their reaction's going to be. John and I decided just to keep it to ourselves for a while and get used to the idea. It became the couple's $2.5 million secret. Only their sons and moms were in on it. The kids, we did threaten them that if they told anybody, we would kill them, literally, and they would never see any of us. The check cleared, and soon after, the millionaire's urge to splurge kicked into high gear. This is our family home, and we've been here 10 years. They paid off a mortgage. Just to get rid of our mortgage in, you know, in our 40s is just amazing. And did some redecorating. Winning the lottery has enabled us to buy some original paintings and drawings. Um, I'm passionate about dancing, and this is one of my favourite paintings. She's a Russian ballerina. This one over here is a tango, and it's also done by Charles Bilic, and he's Croatian. Then came the new wheels. First thing I bought was a new car, a BMW. In the US, a classic car like this would set you back around 15000 John had a bit of a midlife crisis and decided he wanted a Porsche. And this one would cost about $20,000. i have always loved the 911 Porsche. It's always been the ultimate car for me. This is my fun machine. When I pull it out and I just go for a drive, and it just takes me into another world. Travel was also high on the family's wish list. It's given us freedom to travel around the world, which we couldn't do beforehand. The skippers have spent over 65,000 bucks on trips to Italy, Greece, London and Los Angeles. We flew business class, that was just unreal. The skipper boys got in on the action too. Since I love snowboarding and my parents won the lottery, I come here every month. Snowboards and entry fees can add up. The boys love this place, it's a bit of a treat, it's quite expensive. I think that is Alex coming down. But as the spending spree accelerated, the millionaire started worrying. What might the neighbours think? I think at the end of the day, people would guess with us travelling and having nice cars, and it just wouldn't add up. So five months after winning, the skippers finally let family and friends in on their $2.5 million secret. My mum put pressure on me to tell my family. But little did they know that revealing the truth would turn out to be one of the biggest mistakes of their lives. Looking back, we'd probably tell not a soul. Coming up, find out why investing for the future could make this young millionaire broke. Everybody's losing money. It's not like I'm the only one losing money. And later, why winning the $1.2 million house is fast becoming a nightmare. My biggest fear is that we don't sell this house. You know, because if we don't, then I have to take the best deal, whatever it is. You can't leave without cuddles, but you also can't leave covered in hair. With Bounce Pet, you can cuddle and brush that hair off. Bounce, it's the shit. For better chance, it help you save. Zero Harper. TLC. A lucky scratch. I'm Louis J, and I won a million dollars in the lottery on my 19th birthday. College student Louis J was only 19 years old when he bought a lucky scratch off and won a million bucks. He just was in shock for at least two days after. But this kid didn't blow the lot. Instead, he gambled 550 grand on the volatile stock market. So here we are at the New York Stock Exchange. Um, I'm lucky that I have the opportunity to go inside and uh, I'm able to see really how all of our money is working. Since his win, Lewis has been thinking about changing his major and future career away from computer science. This is crazy. They're all just trying not to lose money. I like money. People tell you um, I'm interested in money, especially my own money. Mm. 
There's millions and billions of dollars come through this room every day, and it makes what I do almost insignificant compared, especially the money I've lost. In the toughest market in history, this Boy Scout didn't stand a chance. I've lost about $200,000 in the stock market of the original 550 invested. Everybody's losing money. It's not like I'm the only one losing money. But other than that, I just gotta ride the roller coaster and get off when it stops. That means I maybe made a little money today. Maybe. And it's kind of one of those sobering moments that, yeah, you won the lottery, but now you have to make a real decision. Do you want to stay invested in the market? What do you want to do? And it kind of, your fiscal, <laughs> your own personal fiscal policies grow up really quick. And while losing money hurts, it's helped Lewis make a big decision that will shape his life. Hey, Lewis, come on in. My pleasure. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Before I won the lottery, I would have said computer science or something in programming. I am Bunky Bartlett, and I won $84 million in the Maryland lottery. Wiccan bookkeeper Bunky Bartlett has the universe to thank for his big win. I started getting readings from some of the local tarot card readings, and everything that I was getting was telling me I needed to teach more. And I just kind of like yelled at the universe and said, fine, if this is what you want me to do, let me win the lottery and I'll do it. It looks like Bunky was destined to teach others about Wicca. He hit the jackpot and took home 33 million bucks after taxes. He used some of the cash to invest in Mystical Voyage, a new age center where the tarot card reading took place. We expanded the coffee shop to double its size, and then we added the Holistic Center. Within the Holistic Center, pretty much if it comes under the New Age occult title, we pretty much do it here. He really wanted to do good with this money. Um, you know, he's got some plans for, you know, um, some future spiritual centers. Bunky's other pet project is his new record label, Kabunk. And he has big plans to sign his favorite artist. Delana was the reason I created Kabunk. I fell in love with Delana through her performance on Rockstar Supernova. Winning the lottery gave me the funds to be able to purchase her album from HMG. But Bunky still has to sign this rising star. And while money can buy you the good things in life, it can also bring a ton of problems. A large box appeared in his driveway. Now, mind you, every letter we opened here at Mystical Voyage, we like looked for white powder and, you know, I mean, we, were, we, were, we were checking for explosives. Hi, I'm Karen McHale, and I want a $1.2 million house for 50 bucks. When Colorado resident Karen McHale won this $1.2 million house in upscale Annapolis, Maryland, she didn't exactly jump for joy. I was just like, oh. What am I going to do with a house in Maryland? I live in Colorado. But distance was the least of her worries. I realized because even though it's a house, it is actually gambling winnings. So I actually have to pay like 40% in taxes to keep the house. Or to sell it, I still have to pay those taxes. So it's about $300,000 in taxes I have to pay. That $300,000 is due by the end of the year. Karen has six months to come up with the cash or face stiff penalties from the IRS. And moving to Maryland isn't an option either. Karen and her husband Ryan already have their dream home perched high in the foothills of the Rockies. My husband and I, we actually designed, engineered, and uh, built this house. This is our dream home. And you can kind of see why. We have awesome views. Um, we own about 10 acres of land and uh, we have dogs so the dogs can run around. We love it here. With the $300,000 IRS tax bill hanging over her head, Karen has put the house on the market at a bargain price of $799,000. So Tom and Diane were successful in selling their house, but now it became my problem <laughs> to sell the house. But if she does find a buyer, she'll walk away with a handsome profit. By the time everything is done, I might have $400,000, $500,000. And she has big plans for the proceeds. We're going to pay off the mortgage on this house. So we'll be completely debt free, which is great since I lost my job after I won the house. So, you know, that's a huge weight off our shoulders. This volunteer firefighter plans to use the remainder of the money to launch a fundraising campaign. 
So this is station two, and this is a fire station that I'm a volunteer at. We do a lot of stuff in this fire department that normal fire departments don't. We have more wildland fire, and then we have rafting companies, so we do swift water rescue. With all the money that I won for my house, I am going to start promoting my fire buddies. And they're little buddies that I made up that we put on the fire trucks, and we hand them out to kids at the scene. Karen plans to manufacture and sell the fire buddies in major stores, giving the profits to fire stations across the U.S. But she needs cash from the sale to kickstart the project. My biggest fear is that we don't sell those house. You know, because if we don't, then I have to take the best deal, whatever it is. So how much did the Walters and the charity make from the raffle? We ended up selling it for just over a million. So we got a good bit less than we had hoped. Uh, we had hoped to raise $150,000 for the charity, and we ended up raising just over $25,000. It didn't work out quite as well as planned, but Tom's eager to give his unique brand of fundraising another go. Oh, we would do a raffle again. As a matter of fact, we're planning to do another one, just not in the house that we're living in. Um, I will in no way be involved in this <laughs> next raffle. So will Karen be buying another ticket? Don't get me wrong. <laughs> you know, I'm really excited about it and everything. But I tell you, next time, I'm going for cash. Coming up, join the $84 million jackpot winner as he bids goodbye to his old life. A little more emotional in the beginning, but now it's more of a feeling of completion. That, you know, this is the end of the old life. And later, find out why hitting the jackpot brought this family a ton of trouble. Looking back would probably tell not a soul. What percentage of people said they would continue to work after winning $10 million? We'll find out later. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Lord Disick. Ever wasted money on? Eyes on the road. Your safety is... Erica Trio. These couples, how to please their partner. No problem with Simperica Trio. This... I'll tell you something about my past. <clears throat> An emotional season of My Big Fat Fabulous Life returns Tuesday at 9 on TLC. What percentage of people said they would continue to work after winning $10 million? It's 42%. I'm Bunky Bartlett and I won $84 million in the Maryland Lottery. When you win $84 million, it attracts a lot of attention. But when you're a Wiccan high priest, it can make you downright nervous. Living this, this new age Wiccan witch path, um, you put yourself up for um, discrimination, for ridicule, for um, danger. I have crystals, I have herbs. There are different herbs that are planted around my property that are very good for protection. But they weren't enough. And one night, Bunky came home to find a suspicious box in his driveway. I was still living in Dundalk at the time that we won the Maryland Lottery. I had planned on staying in Dundalk for a while, but, you know, I came home from work one night and found a big brown box on my doorstep, and that did not make me feel safe at all. Every letter we opened here at Mystical Voyage, we, like, looked for white powder and, you know, I mean, we were, we were checking for explosives. And... The box actually contained a safe that an investment company had sent me to put all of my money in because, you know, my money would be safe with them. I really didn't enjoy that. It didn't make me feel safe at all. Bunky and his family fled town, leaving his house and all his belongings behind. The house was empty for a year and a half. It's a long time to leave something like that empty. And, you know, there was nothing in there we wanted and I really didn't think it was presentable enough to give to other people. Pipes had started to leak that we weren't aware of, so the house just slowly started to kind of fall apart. Oh, we crushed the safe! Look at that! We just knock it down and move on with our life. Nice job! Well, that was still my bedroom. So there was a lot of furniture in there and a lot of things in the closets. But those couches are actually a lot more comfy than they look. Oh, I forgot about him. Hey, Dan, can you rescue the dragon? Yay! Have a dragon. Hey, my dragon. For Bunky, demolishing his home of eight years marks the end of an era. 
I can't believe I'm crying. I don't know why I'm crying. I was a little more emotional in the beginning, but now it's more of a feeling of completion that, you know, this is the end of the old life. Bunky has put a lot on the market and now lives in a secluded 23-acre property in a location that he refuses to reveal. Come on, let's go. We're in our new place that's secluded, and hopefully no one else is going to find us, where we can be in our own little world of solitude. This millionaire is going to need his private hideout away from the stress of his record label, especially when his star act, Alana, is late for a very important date. Is that her? That's not her! When millionaire soccer mom, Tanya Skipper, struck it rich in the New Zealand lottery, she and her husband, John, kept the windfall a secret. John and I decided just to keep it to ourselves for a while and get used to the idea. They got the fancy cars and clothes, but surprisingly, kept other parts of their lives business as usual. Come on, Yanni, go! They held on to their jobs. Tanya, as an administrator at a local charity. Well, this morning I'm going to be doing um, some makeup for ladies with cancer. It's called Look Good, Feel Better. My mother's had cancer three times, so it's um, quite an important issue to me. There we are. So you can take that one home and use it in the shower, okay? They get a confidence boost and makes them feel better about themselves, and they leave here, you know, a lot happier, and it's great. The millionaire soccer mom has recently cut back to volunteering one day a week. Her husband, John, still keeps to a more rigorous schedule. That's the hustle and the bustle of the day. Absolutely love it. John has been a funeral director for over 14 years. It's a hugely rewarding job. We deal with people at different stages of grief. What would I do? What would I do? I love my job far too much to give it up. Keeping their jobs was good cover for their 2.5 million secret. But when the truth finally came out, the results were devastating. Well, overall, our friends and family have been brilliant. Um, they treat us the same. We're still the same people. I haven't seen it high tide for ages. No, no. Yeah. There's only one person that has, um, you know, hasn't spoken to us since and, and wrote a letter about it. The letter came from Tanya's sister-in-law. She's dragged up everything in the letter and, um, you know, some things I can't remember saying. Maybe she want us to do things differently or perhaps told her earlier on or if she was looking for a payout or what the situation was, but um, she wasn't too happy about us and hasn't spoken to us since. I took some very good advice and burnt it outside and I jumped up and down with a glass of champagne and destroyed it. It was the best thing I could have done. A reunion between the families still seems a long way off. If I could turn back time and redo what we did, I would tell nobody, absolutely nobody. Coming up, Kabunk Records presents its biggest artist. The next step is to get her on the label, get the CD finished off. Hey, everybody. And later, why money can't buy this young millionaire love. I could go out and date, but I don't know. And I don't know what their intentions are. School is back, and Dick's Sporting Goods says every time that you're dying. Directing Water 3 Leaf Guard. Brilliant really reduced. Don't worry about $4 million in the Maryland lottery. Be a challenge. She insists on keeping her plastic boot cup. Tough love with Hillary Farr. Season premiere Monday at 9 on HGTV. I'm Bucky Bartlett and I won $84 million in the Maryland lottery. Multi-millionaire Bunky Bartlett likes to use his money to help friends and family. He invested in a new age center and set his sister Stacy up at this crab house. <laughs> Funky did help me purchase the crab house. He said, look, you know, I'll take all the risk. You do what you know best and make the money. And, you know, with the economy, I was still a little shaky because I didn't want to lose his money e either, even though he has tons of it. This will actually be the first time I've ever eaten my sister's food here in the crab house. Yeah, 
I think I made a very good investment with my sister in the crab house. I think it was yeah, it was a really good investment. You no, you're gonna pay. You think I'm playing with you? I'm not. Pay. But Bucky has bigger fish to fry than his sister's crab house. He still has to sign Delana to his record label, and tonight's special concert at Mystical Voyage could seal the deal. Not yet. Go check. They're still. Find out how long. But already, things are not going to plan. She says they'll be here in five. Yeah, right. We have a very special opening at tonight. Is that her? That's not her. It's a bus. That would be her. That would be Delana. Thanks for the great flights, man. You don't yeah. have to get us Did you like first class? Crazy cool. Don't you love that? We loved it. This one's a love song. It's called Hate You. I'm still breathing without you. I keep on living without you. My baby. I wish you All the songs on the current album that we bought somehow relate to my life after winning the lottery. The next step is to get her on the label, get the CD finished off, and then we just have to, you know, have the big CD release party, which will either be here in Maryland or over in L.A. Nervous about the success of his first big deal, Bunky is once again consulting the tarot cards. But will they bring the news he wants to hear? It's a lot about feminine energy. Remember that artists are emotional people, that they are temperamental. I'm Louis J and I won a million dollars in the lottery on my 19th birthday. When college student Louis J won a million bucks in the lottery, he invested in Wall Street and felt the pain of a stock market crash. I've lost about $200,000 in the stock market of the original 550 invested. He may have lost some money, but he's still a big man on campus. So how is Louis coping with his fame? I still gotta go to class. It's not like I can, I want enough to not go to class anymore. You know, I think people seem like, oh, he's a celebrity now in such a way. Um, but he's really, like I said before, he's kept it in perspective real well. Yeah, I took this girl uh, to Carmen. <laughs> but has the big win won him favor with the ladies? <laughs> you know we will. Hey, everybody. Hey. Maybe if you come to Freshman Fest, you can meet them. After winning the lottery, I really don't date or meet people. I have a lot of friends. I could go out and date, but... I don't know, and I don't know what their intentions are. I know what mine are, but I'll probably date again when I'm poor, though, just so there's no gold digger uh, position in it at all. He has a lot of friends, girls and guys. I don't really know too much about the ladies in his life. No, do you want to do it next year? I mean, is it a whole year, or is it just... If the stock market continues to fall, Lewis could be free to date sooner than he thinks. But the experience has got him thinking about a new career. Hey, Lewis, come on in. It's my pleasure. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Um, if you would have asked me, I guess, a couple of years ago, before I won the lottery, I would have said computer science or something in programming, but... What did you win? I went a million dollars. Has that changed your life at all? I guess not too much. I'm still here at Towson, so... No, it has changed, <laughs> because you said before you were interested in computer science. Yeah. And now, after winning the lottery, you're, you're thinking of joining... Business. Uh, ...project management and business. Yeah, definitely. I guess I'll... you want to manage your, your earnings. I changed the business administration so I could keep a, a more watchful eye on my money and know more of what I'm doing. The lottery changed my life for both good and bad. I guess the only bad thing, really, is losing part of my winnings in the stock market. Coming up, find out if Bunky's record label will lose its biggest star. Lana and I have some creative differences. <laughs> Are the odds of being killed by lightning greater than the odds of winning a million dollars in the lottery? We'll tell you later. Step right up. Welcome to the Henson and Sons car. The most ghastly. Yourself. Win. No. I checked good to win it. His allergies were going away. And auctioned it on Love using Homoglow. If you win 84 million, you can die from lightning strikes each year, compared to 1,136 new lottery millionaires. I'm anyway, but it's still a bookkeeper, Bunky Bar 36 new.
the odds of being killed by lightning greater than the odds of winning a million dollars in the lottery? No. On average, 91 people die from lightning strikes each year, compared to 1,136 new lottery millionaires. I'm Bunky Bartlett, and I won $84 million in the Maryland lottery. When you win $84 million, you can indulge every passion imaginable. For bookkeeper Bunky Bartlett, that's signing his favorite act to his new record label and making sure he's got a new car for every day of the week. I guess before I really decide if I'm going to buy this, although we all know that I'm going to buy it anyway, but I still like to take it for a test drive. Absolutely. Yay. Top down, of course. Bunky already has 11 cars in his collection. There we go. But he has a good reason for choosing this Mustang. I picked the Mustang today because of its color. It's beautiful blue. It's just my hair. It's great. Money might buy you flashy cars, but it can't buy everything, as Bunky just found out. Can I have everybody in the conference room, please? As of today, I have made the decision that we will not be signing Delana. Um, Delana and I have some creative differences that we can't reconcile with. We've had a lot of contracts going back and forth with constant changes. Delana's team was not comfortable with the changes that I was making on the contract. I was not comfortable with the changes they were making on the contract. Delete me from your world. Losing to Lana is a blow to the record label, but Bunky is determined his business will be a success. And it's my hope that the next few contracts that we do will go a little smoother and we will go ahead with more unknown artists and trying to get them to be superstars. Money doesn't buy happiness. It really doesn't. You can have all the money in the world and still not be happy, but money and winning the lottery allows me the time to allow myself to be happy. And like Bunky, Mom Tanya Skipper is putting the past behind her and trying to forget the trouble the lottery has caused. There's only one person that hasn't spoken to us since. But you know, we're just trying to get on with life and live life to the best. Life is so short. The Skippers will use their money to live life to the fullest. And this cute beach house is the perfect place to spend time with family and eventually retire. We just happened to walk up off the beach one day. This was for sale. So we decided to have a look. Within 48 hours, we owned it. It's a fantastic little place for the kids. I think winning the lottery, there are more positives than negatives. It's brought us a lot more independence and freedom, and we're a lot more relaxed with life. When your numbers line up, get ready for the adventure of a lifetime. And the next morning, we woke up multimillionaires. Because a win on the lottery will take you on a journey beyond your wildest dreams. Basically, we would never have to work again for the rest of our life. For Tanya and John Skipper, it bought the freedom to travel. We've done a great cruise, and we went to Holland and Croatia. For college millionaire Louis J, a gamble on the stock market gave him a new career. I changed the business administration so I could keep a, I guess, a more watchful eye on my money and know more of what I'm doing. And as for Karen McHale, well, she's still trying to find a buyer and hoping her big win will eventually pay out. Or maybe I take the best offer and walk away. If I have to do that, then, then it was for nothing. And, and I wasn't a winner. But whether you keep your riches or lose it all, my main thing with Wall Street is uh, I want my $200,000 I lost back. A win on the lottery will change your life forever.